Hello, and welcome to the Earth Rangers podcast. I'm Earth Ranger Emma, and I have an amazing episode lined up for you. Earth Rangers! Earth Rangers! Earth Rangers! Earth. But before we get started, I want to give a huge shout out to everyone who has sent us an email or commented on earthrangers.com slash podcast, or best of all, left a review on Apple Podcasts. Thank you so much. We're always so happy to hear from our awesome listeners. Now, one thing we always hear from you is that you want more animal guessing games. Let's hear what Earth Ranger Kira had to say. Message one. Hi, this is Earth Ranger Kira, and I'm calling to tell you that I really like the animal quiz, but um, actually, I I find it a little bit too easy. Can you make it a little bit harder? Thanks. Okay, Kira. Careful what you wish for. Let's roll the jingle. Who am I? Who am I? <laughs> now, you all know how this works. We'll play a sound clip, and you have to guess what animal that sound belongs to. And at the end of the episode, you'll find out if you're right. But in order to spice things up today, I'm going to slow down the clip to about a quarter of its original speed. <laughs> Ready? Here we go. <laughs> Ha! Let's see if you can guess this one, Kira. But now it's time for... Wild and Wacky Wild Animal and Facts. Wild and Wacky Animal Facts. Wild and Wacky Animal Facts. Okay, who's ready to tackle a big topic? I am. Today we're talking about... Drum roll, please. Climate change. Now, you've probably never heard of it, but what climate change means is... No, 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 I'm just kidding. Of course you've heard of climate change. It seems like that's all anybody ever talks about these days. Global effects of climate change are... Climate change exceeds... The impact of climate change is rising. What I want to talk about is how animals deal with climate change. Like, what's happening to some of our favorite animal species? And are they able to adapt to their environment changing? So, just super quickly, here is climate change in a nutshell. (laughs) Scientists use the term climate change to refer to changes in the Earth's weather patterns that happen over a long period of time. A summer heat wave or a Christmas without snow are just short-term changes in the weather, not climate change. But when unusual weather like that happens again and again each year, scientists start to worry. So what's causing Earth's climate to change like this? Well, we are. Gases in the Earth's atmosphere trap the warmth from the sun and keep our planet at just the right temperature. But when we burn fossil fuels, like coal and oil, to drive our cars, heat our homes, or produce electricity, the result is more greenhouse gases getting into the air. More greenhouse gases trap more heat in the atmosphere, and this trapped heat is making our planet warmer. Think of it this way. Have you ever been out on a warm, sunny day, and when you get back into the car, it's like a million degrees in there? Ouch. That's because the sun's rays are shining through the window, and the air that's trapped inside the car is getting warmer and warmer. The greenhouse effect is kind of like that, but it's happening to the entire planet instead of just a car. And we can't just roll down a window. Warmer temperatures cause all kinds of strange things to happen, like melting glaciers that can lead to rising sea levels, more rain that can lead to flooding, or less rain that can lead to drought. The specific impacts of climate change all depend on where you live. But what about the animals? animals? Yes. We know that plants and animals can adapt to small changes in their environment when they happen slowly. But climate change is happening so quickly and bringing so many changes with it that a lot of these species just can't keep up. For example, our good old friend from the last episode, the monarch butterfly. You probably remember that monarch butterflies are some pretty impressive creatures that have the longest migration of all insects in North America. But alas, climate change is taking its toll on monarchs. During their long trek, they need so-called stopover sites to rest and recharge. But habitat loss caused by climate change, as well as farming and urban development, are making these areas disappear. And for monarchs that do make it to their final migration destination, it's not the tropical vacation you might expect. Instead, they have to survive severe storms which have been linked to, you guessed it, climate change. 
But what about sea creatures what about like these turtles? Sea creatures, like turtles. You've probably heard that an elephant never forgets. But did you know that sea turtles have a memory that could give them a run for their money? Even though they spend most of their lives cruising the seas, sea turtles will swim back to the same beach they hatched on to lay their eggs, even if this beach is hundreds of kilometers away. Like I mentioned earlier, one of the many impacts of climate change is rising sea levels, which means big trouble in turtle land. Many sea turtles lay their eggs on beaches, but just one higher than normal tide or a storm that creates big waves can flood turtle nests, suffocating the eggs or washing them away completely. But what about the bunnies? What about the bunnies? Wait, who is this kid? But right, let me tell you about a certain white rabbit called the snowshoe hare. As you can probably already guess from the name, Snowshoe hares have wide hind feet that act like snowshoes and help them walk on top of the snow. They've also got a thick three-layer coat that helps keep them warm and toasty all winter. With adaptations like these, they are experts at surviving in cold northern climates. Speaking of their coat, it does a whole lot more than just keep them warm. It's bright white in the winter and changes to a much darker brown color every summer. And that's not just for fashion although I do think they look stunning in earth tones. A white winter coat helps snowshoe hares blend in with the snow, making it harder for predators like the lynx to spot them. Once that snow melts though, that white coat makes them stick out like a sore thumb. So by switching to a darker coat in the summer, they can keep camouflaged all year long. Snowshoe hares have been changing color at the same time of year for so long that they've got their timing down to a science. But climate change is messing up that timing in a big way. Summers are starting earlier and winters are starting later, but their coats are still changing at the same time they always have, which can mean that there are weeks when their camouflage is more like camafail. So what's gonna happen with these happy hoppers? Can they adapt to their changing environment? Someone who is trying to find an answer to those questions is Michael Pierce, a PhD student at the University of Alberta who is studying snowshoe hares in the Kluane region in the Yukon Territory, which is north of British Columbia and east of Alaska. I bet he would be great for a conservation conversation. Conservation conversation. Please stay on the line to complete the call. Hello? Hello, uh, is this Michael Pierce? Yep, yeah, this is Mike. Hi there, this is Earth Ranger Emma. How are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good. I was wondering if you would like to have a conversation about conservation. I would love to. <laughs> awesome. Um, so first off, where are we reaching you right now? Uh, so right now I am in the Yukon, which is in northern Canada. And I'm in this remote field camp called Squirrel Camp. And it's called that because a lot of the researchers that use it study red squirrels. Oh, cool. You must feel like a pioneer up there sometimes. Yeah, it can be quite tough living in such a remote camp with you know, no running water, especially in the winter when, it's, uh, when we're sleeping in a shack outside and it's like minus 35. But it also makes it really exciting at the same time. Ah, so aside from uh, all of the glamour, What's your favorite part of your job? Um, I would say one of my favorite parts of my job is discovering things I didn't know previously and just sort of finding out things that no one's ever seen before or people didn't realize, which is kind of exciting. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a very important question. Are you ready? Yes. What do you call a bunny transformer? A bunny transformer? Mm hmm. Optimus Prime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do have some serious questions for you, though. Okay. So how are the snowshoe hares doing right now? Well, snowshoe hares actually go through these things called population cycles. And it's where their numbers rise and fall every 10 years. And it's very natural. And a lot of uh, species do this. And right now, hares are actually crashing, they call it. So they're going from the peak to the low. And in a couple of years, there will be hardly any snowshoe hares left in the valley. Mm hmm and is that only because of the, the natural cycle, or have you observed changes in the snowshoe hare's ecosystem? So um, in some places, there may be uh, evidence that snowshoe hares are being affected by climate change. 
But at the moment here in Kluwani in the north, we haven't necessarily seen anything. And so the declines I'm talking about are very natural. In two years, there'll be almost no snowshoe hares. But if you come back a few years after that, there'll be uh, bunnies everywhere again. Ooh, that's good to know. Um, so it sounds like you don't just study the snowshoe hare, though. You study their whole ecosystem. Right. And that's one of the things that we've been doing up here, monitoring all the species in the forest, because hares are what we call a keystone species, which means they're really important to other animals in the forest. And all the predators that uh, rely on snowshoe hares for food are dependent on really high populations of snowshoe hares. So when there's less hares around, there's a lot less of numerous other species in the forest. Hmm. So have you ever come across any other cool wild animals? Being here all the time, we do have a lot of encounters that are um, really awesome. So we've seen lynx within, you know, a few meters very regularly. We have seen bears from safe distances, which is nice, and moose and things like that. Do you ever get scared, though? Um, well, sometimes working at night, hares are nocturnal, so that means we have to uh, trap at night and go out in the dark with our headlamps, and sometimes that can be a bit uh, nerve-wracking, but... Luckily, I've, I haven't had any issues. Ah, well, that's good. Um, what's one thing you feel that everyone needs to know about climate change? Um, I guess uh, something that's really important to know about climate change is it's not something that we can easily reverse back. Some of these changes that are already happening are going to be here for quite some time. And it's really important to try and alter what we're doing and the amount of energy we're using and things like that to try and limit how severe these changes are going to be. Hmm. That's good to keep in mind. Well, before we release you back into the wild, can you let us know your number one tip for surviving in the wilderness? Number one tip? Well, I would say good friends. Living in a shack in the middle of winter in the north, it's nice having a good crew around you that keep you positive. Lots of survival buddies. Gotcha. <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking to us. Yep, no problem. Thanks for having me. All right. Bye. Bye. Rangers. Oh man, what a cool job. Michael showed me some photos of his field work and wow, there are some pics of him holding a teeny tiny baby snowshoe hare. It's the cutest thing ever. You have to check it out. Just go to earthrangers.com slash podcast to see this and all the other pictures and videos from this episode. Whew, I need a small break. Captain Conservation, take it away. Attention Earth Rangers, this is Captain Conservation coming to you with a very important announcement. Today, I'm here to say, um, thank you. Thank you to all Earth Rangers who have helped animals like me through a Bring Back the Wild campaign. It's with your help that we are able to work with conservation partners across the country to help species at risk and support the work of researchers like Mike. To date, Earth Ranger members have raised over $3 million to help Canadian species at risk. Is this another typo? Three million, like, uh, three with six zeros? Uh, no, Captain, that is the correct amount. Wow, that is incredible! So, on behalf of animals like the snowshoe hare, the beluga whale, monarch butterflies, western screech owls, blandings turtles, and many more, I thank you. You guys are amazing. What? No, no, I'm not crying. You're crying. Back to you, Emma. Okay, I'm back. So, in the beginning of this show, we heard a special animal sound. So remember, this clip is slowed down to about a quarter of its regular speed. <laughs> Let me play it for you one more time. Here is your hint. This animal is one of our Earth Rangers animal ambassadors. I actually recorded this soundbite myself earlier today with my phone. Ready to guess? Time's up. Did you guess falcon? Or for the experts, aplomato falcon? Then congratulations, you are correct. <laughs> to be honest, I would have never guessed that from the slow-mo version. Sounded more like a mad donkey to me. But thankfully, you'll get to hear what an Aplomato Falcon sounds like in real speed and real life. Because Lily the Falcon and my friend Earth Ranger Chris are here with me right now. 
Hey, guys. So, Chris, can you tell our listeners a bit about Lily? Absolutely. So, Lily is an aplomado falcon. Aplomado roughly translates to lead-colored in Spanish, which refers to the beautiful gray-blue feathers she has all over her head and body. Now, this unique species of falcon can be found living in the grasslands and savannas over large parts of South America and all the way up to Mexico. Just like the peregrine falcons that we have here in Canada, they are built for speed. This comes in handy when they are chasing prey like insects, mice, and rats. However, her favorite food is actually other birds, which she catches right out of the sky. They've even been known to catch birds even bigger than they are. Wow, that is so cool. Lily seems to be in a very talkative mood today. Do you think you could help me test our device with her? What device? You know, the the astrolinguinization programmer, the... No, wait, the uh, anti-Lingonberry diffuser that... Uh, no, it, it's the machine, you know? The machine that lets us communicate with animals? I'm sure Lily would love to participate. She's a very chatty bird, and I'm sure she'll have a lot to say. Okay, cool. Meet me at my desk in five minutes. I'll have the device fired up. Okay, see you then. Oh, this is awesome. We finally get to test the device. Let me just start it up. Initiating boot sequence... And as you know, I have to charge up the algorithms by feeding it some recordings of people impersonating animals. Thankfully, we got some more amazing submissions. Let's see. Earth Ranger got it here. Here's my wolf impression. Great start. Let's keep going. Hi, I am Arlo, and I am from Berlin, Germany. And... This is what a dog sounds like. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> nice job. No need to overcomplicate. Hi, Earth Rangers. Are you still doing the animal impersonation thing? If you are, then here's mine. That's a wild cat. <laughs> Good job. Oh, a light just turned on. So I think we're ready to do this. Awesome. Now we just need to get Chris and Lily in here. Let me see. Chris? Chris? Guys? Hey, Steve. Have you seen Chris? Yeah, I just saw them. Yeah, they just left. He had to go to a school show in Toronto. He said he was so sorry he couldn't make it. What? Oh, man, are you kidding me? (sighs) I'm really hoping we can get this to work. You know, if we could only give animals a voice, it would make it so much easier to understand and protect them. I guess we'll have to wait till the next episode. Again. And you know what that means. I'm going to need you guys to send in even more animal sounds. Just record them on a phone and ask your parents to email the clips to podcast at earthrangers.com or use the voicemail on earthrangers.com slash podcast. Don't forget to tune in next time when we'll meet some animals that are real life transformers. I go out into the field and try to do some sciencing on my own and things may get wet and slimy. Thanks for listening. Earth Rangers. Earth Rangers. Earth Rangers. Earth Rangers.